You wouldn't believe what's going on in the studio, folks. You just have to come here to see it. Uh, Kirk Davis of the New York Post, Irv Rabel, the owner of the duplex. There are just people floating in all directions. <laughs> Amazing. Oh boy, uh, Dr. Earl Zazov, the financial expert, Nancy Parker, comedian who surprises us from time to time, Charlie Morrow, and William Zukoff of the Light Opera, Carla Borelli and Doug Stevenson who are in Murder Without Crime at the Perry Street Theater. Next week is July the 4th and we'll be on tape. We have a special show for all of you. It's a show that we did with uh, Elizabeth Ashley last October. Um, pull, pull up your... Uh, Stand up and bring those, bring those chairs in, folks. No, circularly. That's right. There we go. Uh, July the 4th, Elizabeth Ashley, Fritz Weaver, Ted Kotcheff, director, Polly Draper, and the High Heeled Women, speaking of good guests, and also Michael Pace. So try to watch us. We'll be back live on the 11th of July, and we'll get our chairs arranged then. I want to welcome our next guest, Carolyn Winter. Welcome to our show. Thank you very Your new much. book is She's Okay, Let Her In, The Inside Story on the Night People. Let's take a shot at that, and we're joined by Lisa Yap. Lisa, you ladies are very unusually decked out, and that's why it took so much trouble to, to get up here. You're almost wearing a sort of pe petticoats there, Lisa. It's appropriate for the subject. I have a petticoat on, Nick. You want to see it? No. <laughs> <laughs> this is an insider's look at nightlife, and you both know about nightlife and, and all of that. And uh, how many people did you interview for this book? I interviewed 110 people, but it's the type of people that I interviewed. Mm -hmm. I interviewed the club owners, the club workers, the ones who are in the club seven nights a week. Mm -hmm. So they are really a part of the lifestyle, and they formulate it also for everybody else. This book is not a to or where to go, it's more about lifestyle, right? The club's lifestyles. It's, uh, do you give layman advice as to what to wear and how to take attitude and how to give attitude and how to get through the door and how not to pay for drinks and things like that? Well, when people first come into the clubs, there are an entirely different set of rules and it can be uh, very strange for a lot of people. So I thought that it would be helpful. Also, hints how to get into the clubs themselves. I interviewed 24 doormen, how to get into these clubs, what they look for, for a new person. And I also interviewed 24 doormen, top bribes they've been offered mm -hmm. to get into the clubs. And now say the two of you were going out into a club. We'd get in. In that at, in that at. <laughs> What, what would happen? Uh, you, you'd get in, you're saying. They'd see us halfway down the block and the ropes would stop right. running. They'd have absolutely no problem. It's sort of protection, you know. Yeah. Is, is it all though, so happy in these clubs? Is, is, is it all jolly and, and gay and uh, much fun or what? Never get sick of it? There is so much excitement constantly going on and people just get addicted to this constant excitement and then when they sit home for a few hours they just start thinking about all that they're missing and they go running right well, back what, what in. What are they missing now? What's the excitement? Isn't it just dark and noisy and awful? Well there's so many shows from um, the Broadway shows, all the entertainers coming in and giving brief performances to um, fashion shows. Celebrities are constantly walking in. You'd be standing there and they're but running in. But who cares, out. though? What's so great about a celebrity? I mean, what do they do for you? I mean, do they give off a special aura that makes your life uh, healthier well, let's hear or the what? True dirt. Yeah. Come on, Carol. I read this book, and well, you talked about this model who's a nympho who gets gang banged all the time. Can you give us any more details on that? <laughs> I don't believe what I'm hearing. <laughs> well, it's someone you all know. Is she but a I blonde or a brunette? Is she a she? She's a blonde uh -huh. and she's a she. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, speaking of is she a she, there are a lot of uh, transvestites who go out mm -hmm. to these uh, clubs, right? And very often I'll be looking around and I'll see these um, innocent 18-year-old um, guys um, picking them up and I think, oh no, um, they're in for surprise but I can't really go up to them and mix in, so. Well, maybe they know exactly what they're doing. Some of them do, but mm. some of them come over to me and ask, do you know if that's a guy or a girl? They're great in the ladies' room. <laughs> they saved my life a couple of nights. I always borrow their makeup. They're fabulous Save a tip, you know? They're fabulous at it. 
I, I was, what I want to ask you is I was out on Saturday night and we we're looking for a really good after hours place to go that has some character that's clean and relaxing. What's happening in this after hours scene? Am I just out of touch or is there nothing happening? That is a total disaster. The entire after hours scene, I used to go to three, four, and one night, and the last one, the one that held the longest, was Chris Goes. It was open for eight years. You'd go there at five, six o'clock in the morning. There'd be 30 limos parked outside. You'd walk in, there'd be people like the Rolling Stones, Calvin Klein, and that the was the last one to close. Yeah, I liked it. Just closed this past Saturday night. First it turned into so what does that star. signify then? Uh, these clubs are open awfully late. How do people get out and go to work that go to these they clubs? They don't. They don't. <laughs> well, how, do they, uh, how do they pay for all the clothes uh, that they have to uh, put on to get to the clubs? I mean, what do they do for jobs? These nice that people. is a very big part of the book and a very uh, long answer. They do a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. Some of them um, they should be proud of and some of them they shouldn't. I mean, they do, they do all these things in order so that they could get money to go out dancing and be in clubs. What do you want to say? They hustle? Some <laughs> hustle. Yeah. Many, yeah. I would say, do. Um, there are some careers that don't require a lot of time just three hours a day to oversee. Well, tell me about it. Or young like people who are very wealthy <laughs> and have a lot of money and a lot of free time. Mm -hmm. They're in the clubs. Uh, there are a lot of important contacts to be made. Not all of them are real. They seem real at the time. But it's been very helpful for me. I've met a lot of now, people. Now, what do you do? Do you go out every night to all these clubs, Carolyn? How, how did you get um, to write this book, She's OK, Let Her In? I know that you are a hostess at the, at the Red Parrot. What, is, what got you interested in, in this kind of scene, the nightlife scene? And what keeps you interested? What energizes you to do this? I always wanted to write a book and I decided that the most important thing was why would someone pick up my book? There I am alongside of Mailer and Michener. What's going to be so fascinating <laughs> about my book that they're going to want to read it? And I decided to cover a subculture of people that have never been covered before. Reporters have tried to ask questions to these people and they give attitude and they will not answer questions at all. And I was able to meet all of them. They opened up to me, and I collected a very amusing uh, amount of data. You met them in their natural habitat. Right. The right. You can't get them on the phone. But I would go to five, six clubs a night. Mm -hmm. When I finished writing the book, and I was waiting for it to be published, then I started working in the Red Parrot, because that was my favorite club. What were you going to say? I was going to say, do you approach people in a club because if you go in and you're dressed and you're given attitude, I've found that no one talks to you. <laughs> this is an admission, you know. But how do you do it? Because I know you know everybody. Is it because you're out all the time or do you go up to people and you just start when talking? I or, or yeah. now. Just now, like how did you get like so hooked into the club scene that you could go out and you'd know half the room? And when you go out, there's one group of people that go to all the clubs and they're the same people that appear at all the openings of all the new clubs and they're the same people that um, you just find the best nights for the best parties all over the city and little by little I got to meet them and they would introduce me to more people and it's just um, one group. These they the run all the clubs. These are the same people. <laughs> from limo to limo. And they're all comped. They're all comped. <laughs> they're comped. The book is She's OK, Let Her In, and she is. And she's. Uh, and uh, I want to I thank you very much for coming by, Carolyn Winter, the inside story on the night people. And uh, are you going out tonight? Oh, yes. <laughs> I'm going straight to Heartbreak. Okay. It's Monday night's the best I for Heartbreak. That's a hot club. <laughs> and Lisa, of course, is here to tell us all about the hot clubs, what she does, and she'll be back next time. Speaking of what's hot in the, th in what's hot in the theater, Brian Bradley is here looking very cool in shorts tonight. Brian?